with our children, dear children. How are you all? Yes, you all are excellent and safe at home. Today we will start a new lesson from our grammar textbook. Grammar book. That is lesson number seven. Lesson number seven is kinds of verbs. Kinds of verbs. So, in this lesson, that, that lesson in our grammar textbook, that lesson is on page number 25 to 29. What, what we are going to be learning in this lesson? We are going to learn verb, helping of auxiliary verbs, verbs, main verb. Secondly, we are learning, we will learn helping verbs or we can say auxiliary verbs. Number three, models or we can say model auxiliaries. Number four, finite verbs. Number five, non-finite verbs. Number six, we are going to be learn uh, transitive verb and the last, intransitive verb with the definition, with example. All these things we are going to be learn in this lesson. So first of all, what is mean by, what is the definition of verb? What is the definition of verb? We have learned when, I think so, in the previous classes, in the parts of speech. You know, it's very easier so. But once again we'll see that verb, verb is a word that expresses, expresses what, what that verbs expresses, what the verb it expresses, Expresses or state of so uh, expresses the action. Okay, verb in sada sada simple sentence. Verb is an action word. Verb is an action word. In that sentence, whichever the action word is there, that word is called verb. Without verb, that sentence is incomplete. That you have to keep in mind. And verb is very important. So that a verb is a word that expresses or a state of being. State of being. What it is. What it is that is called a state of being. For example, we'll see for example, we went to doctor yesterday. We went to doctor yesterday. So in this sentence, went is action word. What he did? He went. That is an action word. Okay, expresses what it meant. He went there. Okay, so he went. When is a uh, verb in this sentence? So you see, if you are not reading well, that sentence is incomplete. We to doctor yesterday. Both we to doctor yesterday. We visit doctor yesterday, or we visited doctor yesterday, or we went to doctor yesterday. So when is a verb in this sentence? Okay, the second one is. Is the Rotary English Medium School the best school ever? What is that? Is the Rotary English Medium School the best school ever? Yes, the best school ever. What we are, which word is a word in this? Is. Is is a verb. So what it is showing? This is not an action. This is not an action. It's showing the state of being. He goes to school come. Bahut achi hai. Best school. So, is is a verb in this sentence and shows the state of being. So, this is a, the um, definition of a verb. Okay. Verb specially divided into two parts that is main verb and a auxiliary verb. Main verb and verb is divided. This, you know, verb is a main verb. Main verb and we can say helping verb or we can say auxiliary verbs. Okay, so one thing let me tell you that uh, to uh, learn this lesson, we must know uh, that first before we go to next helping verbs or auxiliary verbs, before that let me explain you that uh, subject, object and verb. In complete one sentence, we always see the subject. Object and verb is very important to get in one sentence. So, what is subject? How do we find out the subject, object, and verb? Just now I said. 
said verb is a action verb. So Rohit is eating banana. Rohit is eating banana. So Rohit, what is meant by subject? Subject is called the naming verb. Now, now is called subject. The naming verb, you know. So the subject Rohit is a subject. Is is also helping verb. Eating is a main verb, you know. Helping verb. This is helping is. Okay, and eating is a main verb. And what he is eating? Banana is eating. So this is called this banana is called an object. Okay, in one sentence. What is second sentence? They cross the street. They they is a subject. Cross. What they cross? They cross. They cross. What they cross? When we are getting answer, what are we? So that we are getting this object. Okay, so what cross? The street cross. So this is verb and this is um, street. The street is an object. Okay, now the third one is he killed the tiger. Very easy. He is subject. He is verb and the tiger is your object. Okay, this is subject, uh, verb and object. Then now we will see as we are going now just now we have seen verb. We go to second one, helping verbs or auxiliary verbs. Helping verb means only auxiliary verbs. So what is that helping verbs or auxiliary verbs? Which are the helping verbs and auxiliary verbs? Is and are was see dear children. Main verbs, action, play, go, you know, uh, and aid. Jump, run, slept. Like this word, that those words are called main words. With that, these are the helping words. Helping words, we are calling auxiliary words as well. So, is, am, are, was, were, has, a, j, s, has, have, had, do, did, does. These are called the helping words or auxiliary words. Let's see example. Okay. See you. The plane has arrived at the airport. At the airport. See, has arrived. See your helping verbs has is here. So we have written here has. Has helping verb. Arrived. Main verb is. Right? Has arrived. Okay. So at the airport. Has arrived. Arrived. Main verb. Has a auxiliary or we can say helping verb. The children were playing in the garden. See ya. Was, were, has, have, had, did, does. So the children were playing in the garden. So were playing is a helping verb or a auxiliary verb. So we go to third, that is a model or model auxiliary verbs. Now we'll see third one. Which is the third one? Models or model auxiliaries. Models, which are the models? Models are, you know, models or model auxiliaries. Models can, could, may, might, must. They are verb. We call auxiliary verbs. Model auxiliaries, we can say all. These words are called models. Once again, I'll say K, can, the past tense of can is, could, may, might, must, shall, should, will, would, out to, O-U-G-H-T, out to, and uh, there. These are called uh, models. Okay, so when we use all these things, we use all these things for request, possibility, humble request, or we can say the ability, if you have the ability. For this, uh, again I will see dear children, for this sixth standard, it is not that much more. But as you go in higher classes, these models complete one lesson is there on models. Okay, there is, we will learn very detailed about uh, models. But six standard, this much is enough for you. These models we always use for the request, possibility, permission, humble request, or if we can say the ability and uh, all. These are called the uh, models. Okay, we will see the examples. Then you will be very clear when you see, when you see this example. Now one example is there. I will be in Mumbai next month. I will be. Will is a model. Will is model. What is that? What it is showing that? As I said, we this model we are using for this 
purpose. So, what is it showing? Possibility is there. Next month, I will be in Mumbai. That is a possibility. For this possibility, permission, humble request and all, we are using these modern auxiliaries. Okay, go to second one. Now, may I come in? What is this? May. May is? May is? May is? Where is May? May, may is modern. Okay, so may I come in? So, what we are asking? Permission. When you, you always ask, may I come in? Man. Okay, so that is permission. I can play guitar. I can, which is model over here. Model is here can. So what it is showing? That is ability showing. Okay, I can play. So my ability is there to play guitar. So I can play. So we are used here can. See here, you shall leave now. Shall leave now. We are saying. Politely you are saying, now you shall leave. Abhi tum ja sakte ho. Shall leave now. I should have. Should is also there. I shall is also there. Should have started my work earlier. I should have started my work earlier. These are called models or model auxiliary. Now we see the fourth one that is final verbs. Uh, finite verbs first we we'll see and then we we'll go to non-finite verbs. Now we will see fourth one. That is very important here children, just pay attention. Because finite verb, non-finite verb, transitive and intransitive verbs, this you know, four, five, six, all are important. But still, you know, children feel very difficult, little difficult to understand this. So pay attention here. Now we'll see finite verbs. Finite verbs that changes according to the tense. Pay attention. Finite verbs changes in the sentence. Okay. How you will come to know that is a finite verb or infinite verb? So here the finite verbs that changes according to the tense. According to the tense means past tense, present tense, future tense. Past tense, present tense, future tense. Okay. According to the person also. First person, second person, third person. And to the numbers. The finite verb changes according to the numbers. If singular person is there, the verb changes. If the plural the verb is there, verb, uh, the verb changes. So that is called a finite verb. Finite verb that changes according to the tense, persons and numbers. Tense, past, present, future. If in the sentence, if the past tense is there, verb will change. If the present tense is there, verb will change. In the future, verb will change according to the. If the first person is there, verb will change. Second person is there, verb. In this way, these are, these sentences, like these sentences are called a finite verb. Okay, it's very easy. We go to uh, examples. Examples, the first one is that uh, changes according to the tenses. Changes according to the tenses. Tenses, so here, I sing song every day. I sing song every day. Sing song. I. I is the same. It is a present tense. Okay. I sing song every day. That is a present tense. See the finite verb. Changes according to the tense. Now see here the second. I sung song. See the song. Yesterday. It, see when we are writing your saying in the present tense. But the same verb. Which are the verbs? Here is a sing is a verb. Here is a sing is a verb. So these verbs are changes according to the tense. So like these sentences is called a, are called a finite verbs. Okay. I sing song every day. That is a present tense. We have written here sing. But the past tense are some song yesterday. So it is changing according to the tense. Now we we'll see according to the persons. First person, second person, third person. So this is the person. See right, this is the person. How it will change according to the person? I read novels. I, first person. I read novel. That is the first person. What, which one is there? R-E-A-D. Read novel. Read. 
But the same thing if I am talking about the third person, Sheila. Okay, Sheila reads novel. Sheila reads novel. See here, I have written here, we have added here S in the verb. This is called finite verbs. This is called finite verb. For finite verb uh, changes according to the uh, person. Okay, see here. The first person I am writing here verb read. But the third person she now reads novels that is I have written here S. Okay, now we we'll see numbers. Numbers that is singular number and plural number. Okay, orange is of yellow color. Which is verb in this? Is is a verb. Is is a verb here. Here, oranges are of yellow color. Which is verb here? Here, are is a verb here. So, orange singular. See here, according to the numbers that is singular and plural. See, orange, one orange. Which verb we have written? Is is written. Is of yellow color. The same if the oranges are plural, that number is plural, one than uh, more than one. So we are writing the R. So oranges are of yellow color. Oranges are of yellow color. So finite verb changes according to the tense, according to the person, according to the numbers is called the finite verbs. And the uh, one clue I will give to uh, understand the finite and infinite verb that is finite verbs are always near to noun closer to noun closer to noun see here is a noun near to clause same is there i is a noun here is a verb is there see i is here verb is here she is here verb is there orange is a subject noun see here is a verb here orange is the subject is R. So, finite and non-finite, this is the difference you can easily find out that in non-finite and non-finite, non-finite verbs are not closer to the subject but elsewhere in the sentence. So, that is I, that I will make you understand after the non-finite. So, these are the finite verbs. Now, we go to see the non-finite verbs. See now, uh, fifth one that is non-finite verb. Finite verb just now we have seen. We go to fifth part that is non-finite verb. Non-finite verbs except opposite of finite verb. That is do not change as per the tense, as per person, as per numbers. Do you remember that? Yes. That was exactly opposite as I said. So once again I will uh, say do not non-finite verbs do not change as per tense, numbers and persons. Okay. And they don't perform any action in the sentence. They don't perform any action in the main action, main role in the sentence. That is, now see one example I am showing you. See here, I found her house, house at a walking distance. See here, walking is also uh, here, the verb is here and I found. Found is also here verb and here walking is also uh, verb. In second, Neha will find. So, see here, one verb is there and, and walking here also, walking is there. What is that? I found her house at a walking distance. I, first person is there, found, past tense is there. Okay, in the last example of finite word we have seen, what, what clue I have given, near the subject, near the naming word, if any verb is there, those verbs are called, uh, yes, finite word. So, I found her house, I found, that is a finite word. That is a finite verb and elsewhere in the sentence when you are getting um, verb is a non-finite verb. 
Okay, and that will not change according to the person, number, and your text. Now see here. I found log house at a walking distance. Walking is as usual. Neha will find her house at a walking distance. Walking is not changing. So these are called non-finite verbs. Again, I say finite verbs near to subject and non-finite verbs somewhere else you will find in the sentence. Means away from the subject. This is called a non-finite verb. And that is main important is they don't perform any action in the sentence. They don't perform. That is very important. Few examples we will see here again. One thing is there non-finite verb functions. So as I am saying here, they do not function any action. Means what? They means non-finite verb function as a noun, adverb, and adjective. As in the sentence. Means in the sentence, if you are finding the verb, that verb is either noun or either adverb or either adjective. Means they function as noun, adverb, or adjective, not the, not the, perform any main action. Means they are playing role as a noun or uh, adverb. What is mean by adverb? Adverb describes something about the verb is called adverb. Adjective describes more about noun, adjective. Noun is noun that you no. So we will see examples, few examples on that. How this non-finite verb function as a noun, adjective and a adverb. The sleeping dog is black in color. The sleeping dog is black in color. The, it, it is an adjective. Sleeping. What is sleeping? Telling about something about a noun. Telling about noun. Telling about a noun. That is sleeping. Sleeping dog is sleeping, describing the dog. So this is this sleeping is functioning as an adjective. Okay, it's as an adjective. So this is a non-finite verb. Go to the second. Reading is a good habit. Reading is a good habit. Functioning. Reading is a noun. You are functioning as noun here. Okay, not to make. So here reading is a noun. Now the second, third one is, my father likes to read the newspaper every morning or we can say daily. Okay, my father likes to read the newspaper function as a adult. What he likes? What he likes? Telling about work. Which is work we hear? Father likes work to read. Telling about work is called a uh, adverbs function as adverb. So this is non finite verb. I think so. Now few examples I will give miss. You can find out which is finite and a non finite verb with these examples. We will see now the basic difference, very basic difference in uh, finite and non finite verb. As already I have explained, but still, okay, as it is very important. Uh, point in this lesson. Mona went to shop to purchase pen. Mona went to shop. Here two verbs are there. Went and purchase to purchase. Purchase. Okay. So as I said, what is the basic difference to find out uh, finite and non-finite verb? Finite verb is near to subject. See here. Mona went. This is a finite verb. Means this is called a Finite verb and elsewhere is there to purchase that is a non finite verb. See here, Mona Lisa ran. Ran is a verb. Here are some catch. Catch is a soul. So, Mona Lisa ran. This is a finite verb and this is a non finite verb. Okay, and here I am studying Spanish to get job. To get job. Okay, I am studying. I am finite verb. In here is a non finite Same thing is over here. They will study Spanish to teach other. See, they will study is also there. So, finite verb and this is a non finite verb. This is a basic difference, you know, uh, to find out which you see you have excess.
exercise in the textbook which is finite and which is non-finite work. So, the near the subject which you have worked for, for your finding out, that is a finite. And elsewhere in the sentence is a non-finite sentence. Mohan has studied Spanish. So, has studied, Mohan has studied finite work and here to explain is a non-finite work. So, non-finite work again is not working as a main role. It works to function as a noun, adverb or a adjective. Here the finite and the non-finite work. Uh, you go through examples uh, from your textbook dear children and uh, try to solve those questions. In the next lecture we will see which remaining part is there? That is the transitive and the intransitive verbs. I hope dear children you have understood this lesson. Thank you and have a